may, please permit me. Shall we all be upstanding? Please forgive me. So there's a simple song I know we sing. Forgive me. Oh, somebody, tell him that you love me. Lift your hands together and say TEDx. Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, go. Oh, somebody, tell him that you love me. Lift your hands together and say TEDx. Once more. Okay. That's right. So this is how we end it. Put your hands together and sit down. That's how you should say please sit down. Thank you very much. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I am grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kokuluma. Always remember this name because I don't know why you have to remember this name. But of course, always remember the name. My name is Kokuluma. It's as simple as that. Not Komla Dumo. It's Kokuluma. I get to always uh, remind people that it's actually Kokulumo and not Komladumo for reasons best known to me. But this life no balance. When Bebe said she hadn't eaten plantain before, roasted plantain, did you hear my shout? I said, eat! And of course, on someone's bucket list, uh, a good friend of mine uh, who is mature. On her bucket list, I'm too sure that woman is about 50 years. She says she has never been on Trotro before. Hey! <laughs> and let me shock you with this one. I got a message at 4.45, all right? Hi, Lady Rosa, Lady Rosa wanted to know if, you, if you've been to the States. We have an, an American coming to town and thought you may want to interview them just, just in thought stage. Then I, once again, I said, hey! So I have to go to stage before I can interview someone in this, in this world. But of course, that's just by the way. My life is simple and welcome to my world. I am human and with lots of imperfections. And I'm going to bring you along the journey of my imperfections. And again, I'll tell you, maybe one of the things we do not say to people, as you look at them today, there are a lot of weaknesses they are still battling. Probably, when it comes to mind, I'll get to tell you. So my name is Kokumo, remember that. So when I was young, for those of you who know where I live or lived in Ho, it was house and estate number one. So get that in mind, house and estate number one. The first building. Now, during those times, we don't go, we don't rent. I was one of those guys who never rented. We were living in our own house. It was beautiful because for those of the people who were renting, well, I boasted. Today, if you see that house, it's still in the states in which it was years ago. It's bad looking. It's not a house you'd be proud of. But one of the things that I always be proud of is this. In the evenings, my auntie, who is my mother, my father, and everything to me, would allow us to sleep on the corridor. Now it's a corridor, so there were stones there. We sleep and we face upwards. What we see is what? What we see is what? Once in a while, you're going to see one shine so bright. That is what happens in the world. By and large, one of us will go out there and become a valedictorian. By and large, one of us will become a shoemaker par excellence. But what made most sense to me is when we go out there, as we shine, if we hold our hands together, we're giving names. We make the world a better place. Because what I was taught, I could become a, a, an astronomer, of course, but my head died, and so we can move on without. <laughs> there are names there. And so what happens is that once you see us shine, if we can hold hands together, we're going to make the world a better place. And that's where I want to start from. Become a human. We are not machines. And I want you 
to go along this journey thinking as a human. Are we ready? Are we ready? All right, so I was called one evening by Ose Kwame that I've been following for a while. Where did we meet the first time? I don't know. We'll talk about it later. And then, would you like to speak to TEDx events? TEDx events? I've seen that. The very first one that was hosted in Ho, uh, TEDx Youth, I guess. Uh, I was the master of ceremonies, all right? Beyond that, I don't know what I had to speak on this platform. So small acts and big changes. Now, it is relative when you say small. Do you know this man? Oh, you don't know him? Who knows this man? Sir Sam Jonah, one of the richest men in Ghana. So I chose the wrong person because you guys don't know him. But of course, I said one of the richest men. If he called you and tells you to come for something small, What about when this man calls you to come for something small? <laughs> so for me, small is relative. But let me walk you through what I did and I enjoy. But the hope and the belief is to become a happy person. And that's what I am doing. All right? So nowadays, I believe that people know the price of everything and the value of nothing. Of course, you know the price of becoming a medical doctor, don't you? Of becoming a pilot. Do you know that what that ends you? Prestige. You become the big guy. You drive the cars, don't you? You know the price. And I, again, I'm not talking about those things and how long they are. Don't get me wrong. Know the prices of everything. Uh, it can afford you, of course, engineers, the pilots in there, big chefs. All the big guys, it's okay to become them so that you can afford caveman watches. You know what caveman watches are, right? The only Ghanaian watchmaker in Ghana. Well, I don't know of any other, forgive me. I might not want to, but the only, and he's from home. We're all here, and so I'm proud. Of course, to buy more, what is that? Gucci. It's a buy Gucci, isn't it? Who would like to wear Gucci around? Oh, please. You don't want to. Okay. I was delivering. Who would love to drive a Lamborghini? Oh, yes. There are people who are lovers of cars. But ladies and gentlemen, check the price tag of the one sitting beside you, the dress they are wearing. Check the price tag now. I want you to do that. What? There's no price tag. Okay, wait a minute, there's another question. What you have, the best clothes or the shoe you have in the house, do you still have the price tag on it? So you see, all we're chasing are not the prices, but it's the value. I'm wearing this shoe, and probably if I tell you the costs, it makes no sense sometimes. But it's because I'm wearing all those people who made this, the manufacturers, the producers of the shoe, everything, they were looking clearly at adding value. And that is why you don't have the price tag on the cars you drive. How about writing $2 million on a Lamborghini while you drive around? So you see that we have been chasing the things wrongly. And I'm about, I'm about to make sense. If I've not started, I'm, I'm sure I'll make sense soon. All right? So after all of these, we buy stuff, we become doctors, architects, I mean, every other thing. Then what? Then what? What? Because clearly, I don't want us to get to a point where after amassing all the wealth, after getting the names, it is now difficult to answer this question. Then what? I have an answer for you today. Value addition. Can you all chorus it with me? Look, listen. When my boss was looking at that tire, car tire, have you seen disposed car tires before? Have you seen them? The only thing that made it into a shoe 
is value addition. And ladies and gentlemen, the, the earlier we start adding values to people's life, the better for all of us. Because life is too short. It's okay to chase everything. It's okay to go after what, but value addition, especially to people, is important. No matter how they they less appreciated, of course. Small acts can transition into big ch changes when values added. That's all there is. This the small acts that you put in there, walk around. The only thing that made it big is value addition. 